we're going to do another patch and this is called a Texas patch. Um, you need power to fix this one. So stick your hand in, figure out what this crack right here is all about. There's a stud right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to, well first, pull this out, save this. You want to take this to your, to your paint company and they'll give you an exact match for the paint you're looking for, the paint color that is. Okay, now we're going to cut. to the stud And then we're going to take our patch, this is half inch drywall, this is half inch drywall. We're going to take this and put this close to the stud, making sure that everything is covered. Put a line on it. Carpenter's pencil works really good in this case. It gives you a, a little bit more space when you run it on that edge, so it should be a good fit. Next, you want to score just the paper. You don't have to cut all the way through it. Okay. Cut to the corners of the drywall so pop it. Okay. And then cut the back of the paper off. This is what you need the power for. You take it, an old piece of wood trim, or you can buy it. I bought this. This is just the cheapest trim available. Um, 
just put this in place and screw it in. I'm going to take these screws just below the surface, but don't cut through the paper. Okay. Good fit. Okay. Again, you don't want to break the paper. Next we just want to uh, spread some mud. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to be wet. Okay. Next we want to use paper tape. To cover up the uh, the seams. You cut with your uh, four inch knife here. Okay, put your next piece. Paper does not have to overlap. Uh, you run into some little finish problems sometimes when it's overlapping. Cut the paper with your tool. Just hold one edge and 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 pull it with. Oh, 
reasonable pressure. Well, that's definitely not pretty, but it'll all work out. Okay, we're back. Uh, day two, we, we've let the uh, Texas style patch dry. That's the, the style that you use with tape, and you reinforce with wood underneath the drywall. So this is dried, and all we're going to do is, is knock it down, knock down the high points. And then what we want to do is, is build a layer on top of the drywall tape. Okay. Something like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're not at the perfect point. So you want to drag your knife at an angle and leave about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch on top of this tape. That way when, you, when it goes to sanding the final coat, uh, you won't be cutting into the tape. You'll be sanding everything else but the tape. Okay, still not pretty, but uh, uh, we're not at the pretty state yet. So um, uh, we're going to let this dry overnight, then we'll come back, and then we will uh, apply a block coat on top of it. Hi, right, we're back. Um, we're going to put the third coat on today. <clears throat> but first, we're going to take a, uh, a broad knife and just knock down some of these ridges. By knocking down the ridges, we're going to uh, uh, keep a whole bunch of little crusty things from getting into the drywall comp compound and getting spread. It's just kind of a pain. Now I've added water to my pan, and this is just regular all-purpose USG that I'm applying. Stir it up a little bit. And we're going to start from the center and just apply a whole bunch of mud here. Now we're going to surround it.
Okay, how's that look? We're not done yet. Okay, so now this this doesn't look like a drywall blade. This is actually a concrete finishing tool. But I found over the years I like the balance of this thing, and I have two surfaces to work with: this surface and this surface right here. And I can hold it at a good angle uh, without putting a lot of torque on my wrist over long periods of time. So basically you want to drag and put a little pressure on the outside uh, of, the, uh, of the project. Let that dry and set up. Okay, we're back to the Texas patch and all the drywall mud is dry. We just want to sand it. We're going to use a pole sander with 100 uh, grit sandpaper on it. It's just uh, up going to be a light sanding. And when I say light sanding, I'm just dragging the pole across it. I'm not pushing hard. I'm just letting the sandpaper do the work. Okay, let's get some primer on it. Okay, we'll let that dry for a while, and then we'll come back and check on it. Okay, so the, the paint's all dry. Looks like uh, my friends at Lowe's matched up perfectly with the existing wall. Uh, the final check is uh, how, how good does it look uh, uh, with uh, ambient light. Right now I've got studio lights on it, but uh, um, it, it, looks, it, it probably looks good enough right now to you. If you are going to go with eggshell, semi-gloss, or gloss paint, you want to try this test before you start painting. Turn off all lights. And then get your cell phone out. And hold your cell phone out to the side. If you see any defects in the drywall, which I'm, I'm not seeing any defects on this patch, um, looks pretty good. I think it's ready for a uh, for a semi-gloss or a, a gloss paint at this point in time. So if you picked up anything up on this video, uh, please subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you.